so my next question is about whether uh, children and young people in the UK are experiencing a mental health crisis because that term, that phrase, mental health crisis, is used a lot, particularly in the media. It's something I've read a lot in various books and articles. Um, so it'd be great to hear an academic psychologist perspective. Are children and young people experiencing a mental health crisis in the UK? It's interesting because I suppose it depends what mental health crisis means. And yeah, that I totally agree that that term is thrown around a lot. So, um, and it's also interesting in that it was being used a lot before the pandemic. And then the pandemic came and it's like, oh, well, no, actually now they're in a crisis. So it's almost like we'd already reached this sort of maximum of, um, yeah, this sort of sensationist language that was possible then it was difficult to go higher than that for the pandemic. Um, Yes, in terms of the fact that rates are increasing, so more people are reporting mental health problems, more people are being diagnosed with mental health problems. Um, not everyone, it's absolutely not everyone. So I think one thing I don't like about that phrase, mental health crisis, is that it implies it's, you know, everyone's unwell and it's just, that's just not the case. Uh, I think there's a crisis in terms of not knowing how to deal with the people who are distressed, especially in schools. You know, I talked to a lot of teachers and there's so much... Um, motivation of goodwill and desire to figure out how to help people but very difficult to know what the answer is mm. um, and I also think there is a crisis in terms of people needing help and not accessing it through the NHS mm. so I think well, there's obviously a lot going wrong but yeah I'm wary of using that term because I think if that message leaks out to people and then they the takeaway is that you know everyone is suffering and that you know they're all vulnerable and I just don't think that's useful for anyone you know the people who really aren't well and also the people who aren't mm. and also like as as a parent myself and also a teacher hearing those phrases I find unhelpful because it you're inclined to maybe over worry when your own child or children you're teaching seem upset or distressed about stuff and you start to maybe catastrophize is this is this what the crisis looks like because my son doesn't want to go to school at the moment and you know is he anxious about school and you start to yeah there's 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 I guess a, a self-fulfilling prophecy side to it um but also the other thing that I find interesting is um so you talked about when we use that language pre-pandemic mental health crisis that when the pandemic hit and things got worse for for some children young people where do we go language wise one of the mm. phrases I read a lot right at the beginning was a mental health tsunami yeah, yeah which yeah, was them that. trying to you know escalate yeah. it yeah yeah but there was a there was a fascinating piece of research by I think it was Oxford and Cambridge University researchers uh using the Oxwell um mm. student survey and from their research I think they surveyed around 17,000 children young people and their families they found, and this was looking at children during lockdown, that about a third of respondents uh, reported their well-being had stayed the same. A third got worse, and a third actually improved their well-being. And I think research like that is really interesting and insightful because we 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 might view something like a global pandemic as like this is a disaster on every kind of front, but actually you know, the fact that two thirds of people or children, young people's well-being either stayed the same or improved, despite all of these challenges and changes, shows that actually, you know, as you say in your book, we all respond differently to challenges and stresses and, you know, and that's an important part of the narrative as well to have, do you think? Exactly. And yeah, that I really like that study. And I think it's so important. It's, it's deeply frustrating that yeah the that we're ignoring all those other children and young people because they're telling us something important as well particularly well firstly the ones who were just sort of remained okay is very interesting that you can kind of weather a storm like that a potential storm um but also the ones who said that they felt better mm. during lockdown i think that's so interesting there was such a pervasive narrative that you had to get everyone back into school and it's such a, you know, a decent chunk of, of young people were saying they actually preferred being at home. Yeah. And actually, if you, and it's, so it's probably bad for them now to be going back to school. Um, so I think it's really important to think about 
their experience as well. Why did they not want to be in school? And it's not surprising to me, you know, school is a kind of relentlessly social, quite um, unforgiving place socially. Um, yeah, you're around your peers all the time. It's mm. just a very intense environment and not everyone likes that for all sorts of reasons. So we need to focus on the people who got worse, of course, but I actually think the people who got better are telling us something important as well. Thank you.